Okay, welcome back, Weekend Trucking, and another episode commences now. In this episode, we are going to dive into the truck setup. So we'll start inside, in the front of the cab, work our way to the back, and then around to the back, where we'll look at the setup in the bed of the truck. So here we go. Okay, up front, I have, if we're just diving into everything, I have my tuner right here. We come over. This is where I will have my phone set up. I got a cord that is just ran down, pushed in. Boom. Now, over here, this is an old RAM mount that I had, and I just upgraded to a iPad eighth generation something that ties in with my cell phone plan so it'll have cell data and i'll be able to have my logbook on there any secondary navigation and all things new business endeavor that i will be diving into this next the following episode from what you're watching right now so when we go down I have, which will be a thing of the past, an upgraded compressor uh, just for the air mattress back here. I'll still be keeping the compressor as long as I have the top part of that, uh, that set up for the bed back there. So then we go on to just a little inverter. So funny story with this is that when I initially wanted to install it, I just wanted to use some double-sided sticky tape to where I could move it around, this and that. Tried one option, didn't work. Tried another option, didn't work. And then I was just like, okay, maybe there's some mounts on the back that I can, you know, put a screw in and then it'll mount to it. Nope. Um, so from there, I was frustrated and I just wanted to get the dang thing installed. So... I decided to go buy some JB Weld epoxy mix, mix it up, lather it in, put way too much on it, and then press it up, put my uh, boot that I have to where there's always tension on there for, you know, a day. And so now it's permanently fixed there. Probably not my best, brightest idea, but it is what it is. When I go um, to get rid of this truck, whenever that time would ever come, uh, I'll probably more so try to sell it as just a ready to go setup for, you know, the professional driving uh, driver. But I'll utilize the power inverter uh, for charging my laptop, for charging the batteries for my impact drill that I have in the back, uh, all kinds of various different things. I'm going to end up getting a like iceless cooler and or a chiller or whatever they they're called and that'll be something where i'll run it through there during the day when i'm driving from there typically what's sitting over here is just my uh, three ring binder that has all my info and then i keep my uh, bol and expense sheet all that on a clipboard that's it just in the driver's seat what i want to do is i want to buy a a little organizer that would sit or that would you know ride right here and then i would just be able to be a little more organized with having everything nicely organized again it goes to that ocd you know whatever but it would just make me feel better so now diving into the back you're going to see that i have some weather tech sunshades and those would be probably one of my top five first purchases. If you're somebody that's sleeping in the truck, on the road, you know, doing overnights, it just the privacy that it creates is second to none, and it's money well spent. Note, if you have a 2010, they don't make a custom fit one for that, so you have to buy the 2011 it fits good enough. It works. There's a little gap here, there, a little overage, whatever. The worst one actually is the back window. It That window is bigger 
must be bigger than the 2011 because it'll sit across there. It covers it. It just, there's no area to, no room to push it in. But again, it, it does the job. It does great, uh, perfect. So it would definitely be a wise investment if you're someone that is, again, driving for a few days at a time and you want that privacy. Then what I'll typically just keep right back there, uh, underneath the Niners blanket is a pillow, normal size pillow, a bigger pillow, or a smaller pillow, I mean, and then a smaller little blanket as well. I'll have my backpack sitting back there. So everything is just over there in the corner. And then we'll get out and we'll look, I'll tell you what I haven't got done yet, uh, but I need to because I always have to use the air compressor is because this little piece right here never holds air. Uh, it did for about a week, and I think someone even commented they had the same issue. Uh, this up here, this has been outstanding. I can air it up, and it'll hold air until I deflate it when I need to put the car seat right here. So what I am planning on doing is getting rid of this. Again, doesn't hold air, uh, but what I want to do is just build out with some, probably some two by sixes and just a sheet of plywood or OSB. It's just a nice little platform for it to sit on enough uh, support that it's sturdy. And really with how I have it set up, my head will be here, my feet will be here. There's typically zero weight that's over here and really no weight that's right here just my feet sitting here but what this is going to allow me to do when i take the time to build it out is now have storage here what i actually want to do is create a little storage compartment right down here uh just something i haven't tackled yet but that is the setup for inside the truck when we get to the to the back of the truck. Uh, one of the things I've installed is just a, a rear view camera uh, that ties in with the dash cam that I have. This is a pretty sweet setup. It will record in minute, three minute or five minute intervals. And it actually just straps on to your existing mirror so that you don't have another kind of little sticky thing right there which is a pain when you go to put up your sunshade when you already have that that's in the way you add another one yada yada so back here uh you're gonna see it set up like so because uh i'm unloaded normally these would be either set in here on the actual camper or in here same with this so i don't have a fifth wheel yet I have that auxiliary tank, which is a must. That is the number one purchase that you need to make when getting started, especially if you've seen gas prices like they are right now. Uh, I used to never want to fill up past $1.85 a gallon. You're lucky to get $2 a gallon right now. So an auxiliary tank is definitely a must we get here and so now it's just everything that's inside this toolbox so everything from just some extra oil some coolant my impact wrenches your chains i keep a floor jack in here a light all the little odds and ends more tools under here um towels basically just all the odds and ends um all the necessities so what else is back there are your uh, orange triangles, all the things that you have to have on you. The fire extinguisher is mounted right there, which can be mounted on the inside of your truck somewhere as well. I think I've even heard people where like you zip tie it to the back of a headrest even. Uh, it just has to be mounted to be legal. But anyways, that is it. Really simple. 
I don't believe I missed anything. Oh, with an older truck, I have this set up right here. All that is, is a Bluetooth connector so that I can um, have music playing or, uh, you know, when I'm listening to a YouTube video, play throughout the, throughout the truck speakers instead of always wearing my Beats. Um, and then a few other odds and ends. I have a pin holder. This also works great for the, for, uh, for the front license plate where I'll just pull this down, snap on, and then boom, you got your license plate right there. You only need that in the state of Indiana, I believe. I could be wrong. Matt, correct me. Uh, if so, thank you. And then I'll keep my uh, transporter license plates just in the in the glove box. And then I'm good to go. That's all I got. If I missed anything, uh, feel free to leave a comment and ask about anything that I may have missed, uh, any questions that you have. Uh, there's a few things that I would do differently, but the main thing right now is the support and creating storage uh, for the bedside uh, of things. I do want to add some smaller or leaner toolboxes back here. So like up over top of the wheel well just to be able to keep that toolbox back there. As you saw, I mean, it's crammed, packed. Uh, my battery is typically just kind of in the back of the of the bed. It's actually on a camper right now. I unhooked for this. I had to run some errands. Um, but otherwise, the battery just kind of floats back there. It fits in that the toolbox I have, but I just have so much stuff in there. I can't fit it all. So if I have the little add-on toolboxes, all more space and a better organization in the bed of the truck. So it's all I got for you. If you haven't, like, subscribe, share. Uh, thank you for those that have already subscribed. I think we're over 450 or so subscribers right now. That just seems crazy. So that's going to wrap it up. Again, like, subscribe, share. And thanks for sticking to the end. Let me know if I missed anything. Uh, stay tuned. Next video, I am going to dive into a new endeavor that all stems from RV transport.